All right, now much of the debate here is falling along political lines, so let's test both sides, shall we? We have CNN political commentator and Republican strategist Anna Navarro and Democratic strategist and writer for the New Yorker.com, Mr. Richard Socarides. It's good to have you both here. So let's get after it. I'll start with you, Socarides. You Democrats, why are you doing this? This is not new. People have known about this. You stop the program yourselves, or at least you give yourselves credit for it. Why come out with this report right now and compromise national security? Well, I think because the American people deserve the truth. And this is the first comprehensive, complete report on what actually happened. And the only way we can move beyond this as a country is to know the full truth. Truth is an American value. And I think it's very important that we know what happened so that we can move beyond this and make sure it never happens again. Why didn't you interview anyone from the CIA involved in this practice? Well, you know, I think that's a little bit of a smokescreen. You know, before I was in government, I was a trial lawyer. And we know that documentary proof, written proof, contemporaneous mem memos are often better proof than talking to the person after the fact. And the committee reviewed over six million pages of memos and contemporaneous uh, accounts of what happened. So they had better than interviews with people trying to cover up what happened now. They had the uh, documents, uh, reports of what actually happened while it was happening. And they also had access to testimony. It's not like, uh, not like no one ever had the opportunity to make the case on the other side. So I think that's a little bit of a smoke well, screen. And they're making it right now. I think you're blowing smoke at my smoke screen, Socrates. <laughs> uh, let me ask you, you say uh, you shouldn't have uh, released this report. Why? Because it increases the risk uh, and increases the threats to Americans all around the world because we are in the midst of one of the most volatile times, I think, that any of us can remember where we're seeing Americans being taken hostage, Americans being beheaded. There's just so mm. much volatility around the world right now. Take a look anywhere around the world because it puts our allies uh, who helped us in some of this, who uh, where some of the venues were, it puts them in a difficult position. And, you know, I agree with everything. That Richard has said, not the not the evidentiary documentary part, because you know they are spooks. They don't put things in writing. This is not like a uh, legal case, and I think it is very important if you're going to put something of this magnitude out that you do try to get both sides, at least the perception of both sides. And this looks very one-sided, which is very out of character for Diane Feinstein and the Intel Committee, because I have always been a fan of how bipartisan she has always led this committee, how well she's worked with Saxby Chambliss the Republican who's the ranking member. And, you know, I agree with, yes, Americans are all about the truth. Yes, we, you know, cannot do this again, should not do this again. This is not, this is not a good thing for our history. But is this the right time for this soul searching, for this hand wringing? If it puts one American life at greater risk, the answer for me and I think for many other Americans is no. That's a tough test. You know, you'd have to ask whether you'd ever stop anything if that's the test, one more American life at risk. But let me ask you this, Anna. Here's the problem that you've created now on the other side. The CIA almost categorically denies everything in this report, okay? Now, that's a problem because you may wind up having the people that you need to be trusted on some level, whatever their reputation, coming out and either lying, uh, spinning, or somehow misrepresenting in a way that may hurt their reputation, perhaps in a way that's going to be tough to fix. It, it is. It's a very difficult position right now because you've got a report that says one thing. You've got people that we're supposed to trust and that are the ones that brief the nation, brief the Congress, brief the Senate saying another thing. You've got people who were there saying things that are completely different. So it's very hard to discern what the truth is. And you hear I that think the side bottom line you, is that there, you, are, there are things that happen, Chris, that uh, that are not the way things are supposed to be done right. by Americans, but the, and but it, you know, but, but that that this is I don't I think it, what it also tells you is that we don't take everything that's in this report as you know God's truth. Right, but here's the problem: is that if any of it's true, this idea of what torture is and that this was okay. We had this lawyer on this morning. Allison was interviewing him, and she kept saying, "Here's your definition of torture: it's someone under color of authority, you know, whatever, you know, uh, government, whatever." And it's serious physical injury, serious mental injury. And he's like, yeah, I don't think it rises to the level of it. it rings so intellectually dishonest that how are these things found to be legal and OK when obviously they meet any definition of what is torture? Well, I think that's the whole point, right, that the central facts 
of this report are not in dispute. There may be some small arguments on the margins, but um, this was a very, you know, dark period in in American history. I mean, it was a dark period first and foremost because we were attacked. And I think we need to have a lot of sympathy and compassion for the people who had to make these decisions. But should at you the have time. that for the politicians? I don't know about that. I mean, listen, the politicians I think at the time, because now you're coming forward and saying we didn't know anything, we didn't know anything. This was all deceptive and secret. Why would the CIA conduct? Uh, vicious torture and things like that, kind of like at their own whimsy. Well, I think the report is clear that they were confused, that it was a very difficult moment in American history. We had just been attacked, and they didn't know quite what to do. They weren't prepared. You don't think someone they, authorized it? Uh, well, I think that, uh, yeah. I mean, I think that the, the, the people in charge authorized it, sure. I think that's clear. I think that's report, clear in the report. I do want to address the other point that Anna raises. I mean, I think that it is very dangerous to say that the issuance of the report puts Americans at risk. I mean, Americans are at risk on account of torture because of the actual incidence of tortures. I mean, our enemies knew what we were doing. Our allies knew what we were doing. The only people left in the dark, you know, before this report came out were the American but public. But they say they want to be in the dark. They're killing me on Twitter this morning saying, why are you talking about this? We want to be safe in our beds. There's that famous expression, Barbara Starr reminded me of it, you know, we rest, uh, we sleep safely in our beds because they're men ready to do violence we to all, those who would arm us. We all want to be safe, but we want to be safe and, and have it consistent with our values, American values. And Americans don't torture. It is against American law. Is it against international law? It's against everything we stand for. Ask John McCain, well, who they Anna, they who had Anna worked approval. for. They say they had legal approval. That's our last point, Anna. So what do we do now? If you're going to have it accepted that this wasn't legal, it shouldn't have been done, it was wrong, that's going to take away, it's going to vitiate, as they say in the law, color of authority, and now you're exposed to prosecution. Is that supposed to be the next step? Should we follow through? I, I, I think prosecuting anybody over this would be uh, really a mistake. Number one, we don't know, as we pointed out before, what is true and what is not. There is, there is a great difference of opinion That's of, why you'd amongst have a trial. the people who were there. Uh, yeah, but, you know, do, what, what, for what purpose? I think that there is already a, I think there's already a sense of purpose in the American people, in the American government, in elected officials, that this should not have happened and that this should not ever happen again. Yeah. When John McCain set, makes that argument to yeah. me, it has enormous power. It was a very powerful speech he gave yesterday because he's lived it. And this is something that John McCain does not talk about easily, his experiences in Vietnam. I know him very well. So when he digs that far in personally, it really is moving and powerful. Now, that, that it happened, we know it happened. Right. That it shouldn't have happened, we know it shouldn't have happened. It should never again happen. Now, did we need to release it? Do we need to litigate it on TV? Right. Do we need to litigate it in a court of law? I don't see the purpose. Well, I think it would be much more costly than what we would get We're out always of it. trying to be better here. We're always trying to, you know, air what's going on. That's the American way. But the question is, what impact will it have? We're going to have to see now. Anna Navarro, Richard Sakharides, thank Thanks, you very Chris. much for both sides on this. Mick? Great conversation.